I didn't want to do all of this and not have it mean something. So, you know, that's the legacy part of it. Welcome to the Creative Tax Podcast with Mike Brennan. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Creative Chats. It's the podcast for artist makers and content creators, where we talk about creativity, the creative process, and story. I'm your host, Mike Brennan. You can connect with me over on Instagram. I'm at Mike Bone, or you can connect with me on my website, which is MikeBrennan.me. I would love for you to be a part of our daily creative habit online community found over on Facebook. It is free and it is filled with people who are creators of all types and everyone there wants to show up more consistently so that they can produce better work and get that work out into the world. Whether it's for a hobby or for profession, we are creators and we need each other. And so this is a great community to be able to come alongside each other, encourage each other, learn from each other. And I want to extend that to you. Simply go to dailycreativehabit.com. You will see some resources there and you can click on join the Facebook group. I also want to point out that you can sign up for the Daily Creative Habit email newsletter. It's absolutely free. No one loves to get more and more email. Believe me, I'm in that camp too. But you certainly don't mind it when you get something of value. And that's what I believe that the Daily Creative Habit email newsletter is. It is valuable because I'm sharing all sorts of resources and ideas and creative prompts that can help you on your creative journey. So go to dailycreativehabit.com for that as well. And lastly, I want to invite you to grab a copy of my new book, Make Fun a Habit. And you can go to makefunahabit.com where I've set up all sorts of resources there as well. There is a fun Spotify playlist that is free. There are free coloring pages you can download as well as free Mad Lib types, uh, fill in the blank. Uh, I call them fun libs. And um, there are also some other resources there available for you, as well as links to get a signed copy of the book in either paperback or hardcover. Or if you wish, you can also order it from Amazon.com. Go to makefunahabit.com and grab your copy today. Hey, I'm excited to bring to you a new episode today with Diane Strand. And Diane is an award-winning serial entrepreneur, marketer, speaker, coach who helps entrepreneurs turn their creative passions into profitable businesses. And, um, you know, she was just such a joy to have this conversation with. I mean, her background, she's worked on production teams for shows such as General Hospital and Friends and Walt Disney. Uh, I mean, she has done so many different creative projects. She has co-founded a nonprofit organization called JDS Creative Academy. Um, she continues just to take ground creatively with uh, an upcoming book she has coming out as well. Uh, we talk a little bit about that, a creativepreneur. And, you know, the, the theme that is very prevalent in our conversation today is just her openness, her willingness to step into some of these new projects and to um, continue to evolve as a creative person, as an entrepreneur, and to make sure that things are aligned with her passions and her purpose. Um, And if you are someone who is motivated, not just simply by making a living with your creativity, but someone who wants to be sure that what you're doing is making a difference in the lives of others, um, then you're really going to enjoy today's conversation. So without further ado, here is my creative chat with Diane Strand. Well, hey, Diane, welcome to the Creative Chats podcast. Thanks so much for being here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be a part of your show. Yes, yes. So we were talking just before rolling here, and I know we're going to get to some exciting topics today, which I can't wait for. Uh, But before we dive in too deep into the pool there, I always love to open up with this question. And this is a question that it's kind of big, um, but... You know, it's the whole kind of who are you, what do you do kind of thing. And maybe it's the soundbite you give when you're at a party and someone's, you know, uh, being introduced to you or something you just like to lead with that opens the conversation a little bit. So I'll turn it over to you. Who are you? What do you do? 
Oh, well, um, I'm Diane Strand. I'm the executive producer of JDS Studio. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm a best-selling author. I'm a speaker and I'm a nonprofit founder. And I have a couple of TV shows and a podcast myself and a radio show. Um, I love to throw a big events. And my my thing that I always say what I really do today is I make dreams into realities. And, and that's what I do because I lead with passion and purpose. Mm, I love it. Love it. And obviously you're a slacker because, you know, <laughs> all those things that you've been doing. Uh, I, you know. I guess I should say workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I love that making dreams uh, a reality and, you know, not just your own dreams, but the dreams of the people around you uh, and giving, I'm sure, you know, practical uh, resources and tools and opportunities for people to to really thrive. Um, and, you know, this is part of why I, I love that we were having this conversation today is because, you know, regardless of um, if someone is, a, you know, a visual artist, a musician, uh, an entrepreneur, you know, I always believe that there's something that we're all creating. And even at a, at a base level of we're creating a life that hopefully we want to lead, right, that we're enjoying leading. Uh, and we have a vision for that. And to be able to set out and do those things in such a way that we're not just the, the beneficiaries of that, but the people around us that we're serving, that we're actually making a difference in the world. And um, I love when I get to meet people and just hear stories and and just see how in their corner of the world what's happening so um yeah so i'm excited to, to dive into now some specifics of some things um i'd love to just kind of turn the dial back a little bit and start like when did you first think of yourself as a creative person like maybe there was something when you were a kid an activity you were involved in or some some uh experience you had that said hey you know what like I'm wired a little different. I, I definitely am a creative person. Oh, well, I would say that first really showed up for me very, very early on in second grade. Um, I love this. I love connecting the dots. I love looking back. It really, you know, tells me exactly uh, where I am today because I am able to do that. And I really started putting that into place probably about three or five years ago as I started really connecting those dots. And those first dots show up big in second grade. I was di diagnosed dyslexic and I was told that I couldn't read and I really wanted to be in the play and I wanted to be Betsy Ross in the school play. And I had teachers and even my parents saying, you know, maybe not this year, you're not ready for, you can't do it. And I'm one of those people that I say, oh, really? Mm, hold this, watch me. <laughs> and, um, and that's what I did. I taught myself how to read. I went out for Betsy Ross in the school play. I got the part of Betsy Ross in the school play in the elementary all the way through sixth graders, this little second grade little girl. And um, so I proved to myself that I can get things done when I really put my, you know, my power into it. And another thing that I really wanted in second grade was this dates me a little bit because show my age, but um, I wanted a black and white 19 inch TV that in school, if you sold the most candy, those little fundraising things that you would win these prizes. And that was the grand prize. So I set out to win that TV and I won that TV and I still work in TV today and I love TV. So um, those are huge for me. And then when I you know, start to go through life. And I see it, you were talking a little bit earlier about being creative and how you have to infuse that into entrepreneurship. And I so believe that. I think the arts level the playing field. It touches every industry. And for me in high school, you know, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. And, um, you know, I I wouldn't have stayed in school. I struggled in school. It was not my thing. And um, but it was keeping me attached enough. I wanted to be in the play. So I couldn't ditch school that much. Right. And I couldn't you know, I had to focus. I had to get enough good grades so I could be in the play and be a part of the theater department and do that. Well, you know, it made me graduate high school. Most of my friends did not back then. And it was, it really kept me connected. And as then I came out of high school, what got me back focused and going back to school was again, the arts, because I didn't know what I was going to do. I, you know, was trying to bounce around, but I wanted to be in a play again. So I went and 
went back to junior college, community college, and I got in a show and started focusing on that. And it kept leading me down the next path. And this little dyslexic girl then started her entrepreneurial journey, you know, and I started doing theater in downtown LA. And uh, my my brain told me, well, if we're unemployed actors, let's put on a show and invite all the producers and the directors to come see it. And that's how it really all started. Um, just one foot in front of the other, the arts keeping me connected and being that through line to I wrote a screenplay. I sold a screenplay. I then have a Hollywood career, you know, because I was told I wanted to become a supervising producer with that screenplay that was going to showtime. And they looked at me and they said, well, we're going to shell your um, screenplay because we have something similar, but yours was registered first. And so they paid me out for that. And I said, well, can I become a supervising producer and work for showtime? No, sorry, you don't have a bachelor's degree. And so I was never going to let someone tell me that again. I went back, I finished my bachelor's degree and I really never looked back. And then I went to work on shows like Friends and General Hospital and Veronica's Closet and built the high def control room at Staples Center and uh, did some amazing things uh, for a great 10, 15 year career. And, uh, but it was just chasing the next creative outlet for me at that time, chasing a little bit of money at that time. Uh, but what really shifted and changed for me is I went to work where I didn't even know what in, you know, industrial video production was or corporate video. I really didn't know anything about that, but I went to work for Amgen Pharmaceuticals and I started making videos that mattered and had purpose. These were videos that were touching people who had cancer and teaching them how to use medication. And it made such an impact on me. I'll be honest, I got swayed. I went to work in the reality television boom in early 2000 because it was a lot of money. And 11 months later, I went running for entrepreneurship and never looked back. And even though I didn't step right into the nonprofit world, um, you know, it was making videos that mattered in corporate and business and marketing and communications and how to videos and training videos. They had a meaning, they had a purpose. And then down the road, when I opened the nonprofit, and now um, we do and we teach, I still do, but we teach and youth, teens, and adults mainstream through special needs and knowing that it makes a difference and an impact through all the things that we do is why my journey starting in second grade leads me right to where I am today. Mm, uh, yeah. Thanks for asking. That was great. I, I love that. And there are so many things in there that I heard that I, I, I want to just pause for a minute and unpack a couple of things. Um, the first thing is that, you know, it's, it's apparent to me that creativity wasn't just at work in the actual like projects you were working on. But I think it was at work in how you showed up, right? Like when when you talked about facing certain challenges, it was, okay, how do I creatively problem solve this? What am I going to do in the face of this? And how does that then either make a twist or a turn in what it is that I'm doing? But you're, it, it seemed to me you were looking for that right next step and then going, okay, how do we do this? Right. I mean, would that be a fair assessment? Absolutely. And and I still live by that today. I think that's the manifestation of it all. You know, I see something at the end and I don't need to know what each step is along the way. It will reveal itself. Just take that next step, you know, and be creative into it. Put your heart into it, your purpose, your passion, bring your creativity. I, you know, I don't care if you're making art, television, you are the artist you're a CPA and you work with numbers. You have to be creative to be able to market, to communicate, to reach people, to be able to touch people. And that's what we're all looking to do with our creativity is make a connection. Yeah. And that's why it's so important. Um, and yeah, it's such a through line and such a connector and a little more creativity in our world would really help. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know when you're at those junctures where 
it's like an iteration of something, right? And maybe it's a, um, you know, here's, here's not just simply a new project, if you will, but this is actually now some new leveling up that I need to step into. Like, can you talk a little bit about like how you personally knew maybe some of those, you know, um, pathways and, and going, okay, is this just a, a, a pass through where it's like project and, or is this a bridge leading to something else where I need to level up now? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'll be honest, it's in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of those, um, revelations come in high in hindsight and help me keep moving forward. Uh, but you know, I would say that I'm in a lot of that state right now. I'm in that level up state of how, you know, we all enter different seasons of our life. You know, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. Um, so where am I taking it and where we're growing? Um, if you're not growing, you're dying. So yeah. you have to continue to grow and stretch yourself. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So you have to continuously step outside it to find that magic, to find that spark. And I don't always know exactly what I'm looking for. That's part of the creativity in it. I'll start a project and I'll delve into it and it will drive me in a new direction. And sometimes it comes in the spur. Sometimes it's from other people. I mean, like today I have a staff of 14 employees. And when something shifts or changes in that aspect of maybe somebody leaves their job or we bring on a new energy into it, or because we're teaching and we do television and we have a new student we're teaching and creativity just blossoms out of that because that's what happens when you get creative people in a room, it just starts mm -hmm. energy flies. So it can happen very fast. And I can be in the middle of something I thought was just a project and it turned me into something new. And that's kind of even how the program started. I hope I'm not talking too much because this no, no, is where the program really started was I just said yes. Um, I showed up. I said yes. Somebody asked me to take a meeting and I was like, what does this have to do with me? And, but I said, yes. And they asked me to then meet an individual who loved audio production and just wanted to learn more. And he was a man with special needs and he would come clean my studio. And I'm like, well, I have more work out of my house than my studio. I show up at the studio when I'm doing a video shoot. I had to kind of switch things, but I said yes again. And five months later, I wrote a program for adults with special needs. And I have 30 of them in the room right next to me. So that was just saying yes and helping someone out so they could earn a paycheck and sweep my floors to, I taught him audio production, got him a job. And now I have 30 more that I'm doing the same thing with. And that was never even a thought or mind. But then remember back to connecting the dots. I'm that little dyslexic girl. And so why wouldn't I be helping other people fill their dreams? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the power of saying yes. And sometimes it's scary to think about, well, maybe I'm not qualified or maybe I don't really have a plan here, but then being willing to figure it out. And I think there's that, um, that certainly that common theme with a lot of people I, I speak with, um, in their stories and journeys where they're like, you know, all the things that they've been able to accomplish, it has been because they've been open and they've been willing. And um, one of the things you talked about was the sense of like meaning, right? And doing meaningful work, significant work that had impact and moving through maybe some more of the, the traditional Hollywood type um, experiences and then into some more of those experiences where there, you can tie direct meaning and, and significance probably to the work that you're doing. Um, do you think that like you had to go through some more of the the traditional route, if you will, um, and working with, you know, um, say bigger name clients and that helped open the doors for you? Or do you think that like, had you gone into something more of like closer to what you're doing now, um, that would have been enough for you to be able to, to really generate the opportunities or, or have the connections and relationships? Um, well, that's an interesting question. You know, I, I believe our pathway is, um, you know, we, re we hit those certain forks in the road as we're along our journey and we have a choice. 
um, in, you know, which way we're going to go right or left. And it's okay sometimes to choose right and get a little way down that path and pivot and make a different choice. And those things are okay. Um, you know, I don't know that I could, I think that every step has led me exactly to where I am for a reason. Uh, you know, I definitely have big goals and big ambitions and, um, I, I don't see that they have changed just because I'm out of the, the Hollywood famous world, so to speak. I still tap into that world. Um, it's still very much a part of my life. I produce a TV show. Um, I have an event. It's called DigiFest Temecula, which is a three-day event where I bring Hollywood to me. It's a competition. Uh, it's an international award-winning festival in its eighth year. So, you know, I still keep everything around me circling. So, you know, I'm not one to let go of anything. Uh, you know, even when I level up and, and do more, I figure out a way to sustain what I've already done. And that's building the legacy, um, which is something that I didn't even know what that was when I started entrepreneurship. You know, I just knew at the end, I didn't want to do all of this and not have it mean something. So, you know, that's the legacy part of it. And, you know, your journey makes you who you are. If I would have stepped into this, you know, I would, you know, as a young girl, I was also precocious and, uh, you know, probably a little bit me, me, me and self-centered. And that was the Hollywood and being on stage and having to be the center of attention. And today, uh, you know, I'm not on, I found different stages today. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not the actor. Uh, I'm the producer. I love to write. I like to be behind the camera. You know, I'm not real good to, you know, as we all run into the social media world, I can do the podcast. I can get up in front of a camera and talk all day long, but turn on my phone and talk to myself and do a live. I'm like, <laughs> but that's that fear, right? You got to put right. it in the back seat and you have to do it anyway. Um, and that's what I tell people that I work with is that, you know, you have to, you can't do it fearless. There is no such thing as fearless. Do it with fear. Do it anyway. Start before you're ready. And, you know, and that's been my motto since the beginning is, you know, watch me, you know, tell me I can't. That'll probably make sure that I do, um, you know, in that sense. And, um, and I, I can't see it happening any other way than it has unfolded. And I don't know how all the next steps in front of me are going to unfold, but I do have a vision for the end. Um, I have a vision for what I want it to look like. I don't know exactly how I'm getting there yet. And all the journeys, past pivots, changes, all those things that I'll have to take to get there, but I'll get there. And as long as I can trust myself, build that confidence, you know, which is consistently doing things over and over again, that, that scare me you know, mm -hmm. and doing them anyways. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So much of that, um, just really resonates. I mean, this, you know, the idea of kind of it's, you're living your life, you're trying to redeem those moments and all the things, all the relationships, all the experiences are culminating to, to point you in the directions. And, you know, I think so many times people, um, if they're more motivated by meaning and significance and purpose, um, struggle with the idea of, well, it's got to be either or. It's got to be either I sell out and go the corporate route and do whatever, and it has nothing to do with my meaning and purpose, or I go with the meaning and purpose, but then I can't make any money off of it. And so I'm kind of stuck between these two worlds, right? Um, and, and I think, especially when you're younger, it's harder to see that it's not that black and white and that there are things that you can do in either camp where you're um, you're still stepping into the things that you're supposed to be doing and being the person that you need to be for that moment, right? Showing up the best way possible. Um, what advice would you give to someone who maybe is listening right now and they're thinking that, right? Like this is the, you know, I'm not sure if I should pursue something that is a little bit more quote meaningful and and aligned with um, you know my uh, my purpose or my calling and whatever you want to call it, or should I be looking for uh, the the corporate route and you know getting more um, experience, getting more income, building a base, building a network, those kind of things. Like, how would you navigate that conversation? Um follow your passion, 
follow your purpose. And both can be true at the same time. The corporate world can be your purpose and passion if that is your purpose and passion. But if it's not, follow your purpose and passion wherever that may lead you. Because I can tell you that money comes and goes. It's wealth that you're looking to build. That's what you really need. You know, have a cash flow. You you don't need to worry about You know, I I see that happen with my employees. They'll go take the next job and they'll be crying as they're leaving here because they left for a dollar fifty more. And I'm like, you know, that dollar fifty is not going to get you millions of miles ahead. And so that's that if you have a passion and a purpose here, you will get there faster here. And for some that's true, and for some that's not. I would say follow your passion and your purpose, because when you're doing that, you're filling your life with so much more because you get the satisfaction of doing something that you love, being with people that respect you, cheer you on, you have your support around you and you're making a difference. And some can make that in the corporate world. And if you're not, you know, we also, we all have to put food on the table. We all have to get gas in the car and it's not cheap. And I, and I totally get that. So, you know, if you have to do one thing while you're doing another, that's fine too, but keep moving, but set a date. If you're in the corporate world and you want out, look at a calendar and say, okay, May 15th, that's it. I'm done work towards that, have that vision. You don't have to know how the heck you're going to make May 15th happen. You just know May 15th is that date and be willing to make that date your date and put it into place. Trust yourself. That's how you build that confidence to trust yourself that if you keep to that May 15th date and you quit that job, you have no choice but to make the money somewhere else. And remember the money comes and goes, pay the bills, build the wealth. Don't build your bank account with just your cash flow because that does not do you any good. Put the money into wealth and then let it go. And the more money I have spent over time or invested in myself in a coaching program, a digital course, which I didn't have those back in the day. This is like new, right? I didn't have podcasts to listen to and to do all of that. Listen to them, take the advice, jump, start before you're ready and go for it. Because the same thing, if you're in the corporate world, then go talk to your boss, how you can do better, do more, put yourself out there, get more into the passion, make that your passion, make that your purpose. So every day you get up and do something to make your passion, your purpose come forth. That's why I'm an entrepreneur, because I love doing something new and different every day. And, yeah. you know, I, I that's that's what works for me. Have I had the feast of famine? Of course, you know, where I didn't know where I was going to pay the bills and I have three kids and how are we doing this? And, you know, I rented a house for a long time before I bought a house. I sold my house. I quit six figure income jobs, you know, early 2000, which was a lot of money then to sell my house and rent a house to then figure it all out and have two more kids. So I stopped. You have to live in abundance, not scarcity. And you just have to go for it and remember that the money will come and go, you know, mm-hmm. and the wealth is what you're looking to build over time. And you don't need that till the end. Yeah. Yeah. Wise, wise words for sure. Um, I'm wondering if in your experience of, of your entrepreneurial journey, is there a moment maybe that you had where it was a tremendous teacher that was a lesson that, that you can recall that was like, this was a game changing moment for me. Um, Oh, so many, so many, Um, you know, I try to learn from everybody who's in my world, whether they are um, someone that I look at as a mentor and someone I want to follow in their journey. And that's how you're supposed to look at it. Don't ever compare your chapter one to somebody's chapter 20, but look at that chapter 20 and learn from them. How did they do that? What steps did they take? Do those steps. That's how That's how you can learn. See what they did. Watch them. Today's world, we can be so much closer to our idols or our mentors and touch and, and see their journey all through social media. Follow. You know, that's how you can kind of even learn. I mean, if the ones that you watch all the time, if it's 
post and put a carousel together. It's post uh, real post. Do the same thing. Learn from them. So, I mean, I start with my father. He was a business guy. And, you know, I learned so much from him. I worked my my business training was a CPA. I worked my way when I had was told I had to go back and finish my degree from Showtime um, or I would never work in this industry, which I don't know is 100 percent true. But, um, you know, I still went and got my degree, uh, but I worked my way through college working for a CPA. So I learned all about numbers and balance sheets and taxes and that was a lot of business training. You know, my partner in life and business is my husband. I rely on him a lot. We're business partners. We're partners in, in family and we, we can bounce off of each other. You know, we have different strengths, but I learn from every, I'm learning right now, just sitting here with you, Mike, it, it's like hearing you talk. You're helping me even get more clarity. As you ask me a question, more clarity comes. And I learn, I, I love that from every moment in my life. That's why I'm an entrepreneur because yeah. it's new. It's different. I get to engage with people that, um, I couldn't do if I it even stayed in Hollywood, you know, um, you know, it's one of those things I, I worked on friends. Yes. You know, I, I have a deep loss with, you know, Matthew Perry, who just passed away. And I, did get to work and talk with him, but that was because he was Matthew Perry and he came and he made a point to come and meet me. I can't say I know all the other friends, right? Because I was in production, they were the celebrities. It's just a different world. So, you know, now I get to engage with just such dynamic people and um, and then balance with those little Hollywood connections too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that, that you just have such an openness. Um, and I think that openness brings, I'm sure opportunity. It brings, um, it, it brings learning about yourself, about how you can show up and serve more people and even various projects. I mean, the things that, that you listed earlier, um, that you have your hand in, you know, I'm sure none of those things would come to be if you weren't open and looking for, new ways to show up and new ways to give and express. Um, can you talk a little bit about like, what does it look like for you when you get an idea for something and you want to chase that down and make it a reality? Like, is there a step-by-step -step process for you? Is it more organic? Like talk a little bit about the creation process, if you will. Uh, very organic for me. Um, I'm a, I'm a talker, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> uh, so it's very organic. I talk things out. That's even how I write. You know, I, I am a dyslexic girl. I typing and trying to watch the words on the page. I can't do that. I talk into a phone and a recorder, and then I go in and edit and work that way. Um, you know, it, it, it's very organic. I'll Recently, we have a TV show. It's called Spirit of Innovation. It's in its sixth season right now. And its focus at the moment, or I would say as of two weeks ago, it was Spirit of Innovation, news and information for Riverside County. And we had some little shifts and changes that were happening with our population and how we could help them and some conversations that were rolling. We started this mission uh, about two years ago, it came out in a journal writing. All of a sudden I wrote Arts Across America. And I didn't know what that really meant, what I was gonna do with it. Then it started with, well, I'm going to create a course and I'm going to, and the course grew into, I'm writing another book and the creative preneur started coming out. And then I started getting my team and I'm like, well, you teach script writing, you need a course in script writing and you're my, my art teacher and you need to teach this. And so I started making all these courses and putting it together. And now we're at this point where we have our participants and I'm seeing um, our adults with developmental disabilities are extremely talented. But I also see where their barriers and challenges are and how I can go about getting them placed in jobs so they can be successful. And they really would thrive in a gig economy in that freelance kind of world creative that's what creatives do they you know they get commission for a voice or for an art piece or for an edit or something like that so I want to start pushing that so now all of a sudden two weeks ago I woke up on a Saturday and it's spirit of innovation supports arts across America 
America, we're no longer focusing just on news and information in Riverside County. We're, we're opening it up and all the creatives like you, I would love to have you on our show and we can talk yeah. creativity where I was so much more pigeonholed into, well, it does, what does that have to do with Riverside County? What does that have to do with news and information? And are we making an impact? Are we the, and I just opened it up and changed and it went from all the format is changing, the look and the feel. And in two weeks, this has all happened. And our next show comes out December 15th with a new feel and a new look. I used to, again, remember back behind the camera, I'm now my husband husband and I are going to be hosting the show. We used to bring in stakeholders from the community. It, it's just a whole shift and a change. It was organic. Something triggered and happened and I rolled with it. And, you know, it was, didn't get much sleep that weekend. I was just, uh, the wheels were turning and I came in and my team loved it and they're all behind it. The passion is going, the community, we have all this I've done now two lives, you know, looking at my phone, which I don't do. So it's just so much has changed and that's how it happens. And I'm excited and I'm invigorated and it was like, yeah. And it's just a whole new energy. And that's kind of how it happens. You know, it, I don't know if it comes to me in a dream because I didn't really sleep much, but you know, it just rolls out in the middle of the night. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. And you're, you're, you're right about the energy. I mean, you're, you're passionate when you talk about this stuff and, um, it's obvious that you love what you're doing and, um, that in and of itself is, is a testimony to following your dream, right? Following your passion, because it makes all the difference in how you show up personally, professionally, just as a person, right? Um, and I see that at play in you. So I just applaud that. Um, and, you know, you, you, mentioned even just uh, previously quickly, you know, about a book and an upcoming book that you have, and just even writing and having, you know, struggled with dyslexia. I mean, that a lot of people would think, well, that's a, that's something that, uh, you know, is going to disqualify me, but yet you have taken that same spirit of, you know, watch me, I'm going to do this. This is not going to um, make me, you know, give me a boundary. It's going to, it's going to be a launching pad. Right. And, you know, can you talk a little bit about like, why did you decide to write for the, your first book and then even this next book of, of creative Panur. Well, I'm not a writer. I'm a storyteller. That's, mm -hmm. um, that's really, that's a true difference. I've met writers and I've met storytellers and, uh, you know, you can read my writing. It's going to have spelling mistakes and grammatical mistakes, and I'll put too many commas in and it, it's, I need an editor, <laughs> but, uh, but I love to tell stories. And so there's such a, and that's how you connect with people is by sharing a story. Um, you know, I could throw out a whole bunch of acronyms and um, eulogies. I mean, you've heard them throughout here, the start before you're ready. It ends at the end of your comfort zone. Sure. All those things are true. But if I didn't connect that to a story or how I had that work for me, um, it, it wouldn't work for the person who's listening or reading. And so that's what writing has really done for me. Um, you know, going even back to when I wrote the first screenplay, um, it was just a story. Um, you know, I was 22 years old um, and falling in love kind of for the first time, real love. That's when I really met my husband. Um, but I then reminiscing on those first loves that I thought were there when I was 16 and 17. And there was it was a story that just kind of rolled out of me in telling those what you think are first love stories. And that was the script that I wrote. And it was just a story that I put into a format. So you learn a format, then um, and then you tell a story behind it. And that's really how the writing has come about, you know. I write grants, I write curriculum, you know, but I do it all the same way. It really starts with a story. And then I get in and I break it out. I just talk into my phone or a recorder or what I need to do and close my eyes and dump it. And then I can get into, you know, a little bit of editing that I can do. And then it, 
you know, I, I have great team members that can really help me shape it up and, and get it. So, you know, the rest of the world can understand my thoughts. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're a little creative and out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that you have become intuitive enough with yourself to go, okay, it's not going to look like a traditional process for me. It's going to be, you know, speaking it to my phone, it's going to be utilizing tools and technologies that help you get to the end result of where you want to be. You're not so tied with like, well, it has to be this particular way or the traditional route is, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and I think, again, that goes back to your openness, right? And your ability to to adapt into going, okay, um, this is this is how I need to work. This is how I need to show up. And if I'm going to get the results I need and that I'm envisioning, then here's the tools for today. And that may change for tomorrow, right? Like, I mean, I'm sure that there's been that iteration of, um, maybe process tools over the years that you've used, correct? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, going way back, you know, when I say I talked into a recorder at that time, it was a tape recorder for my first screenplay because I didn't have a phone. I had a pager, I think maybe at that time in my life, because that was <laughs> what was out. Um, you know, so I didn't have a phone at that time to just, you know, sit as comfortably in my bathroom as I do now and, you know, talk in a closet. But, um, now, you know, but I would, I use tools and technology. I mean, it, I will, you know, stepping into the future, I am all into AI. You know, you have to get into to AI because if we don't learn it and master it and work it, I don't want the robots working me. I'm going to work it. That's how we're going to stay relevant. Um, even in the creative world, you know, it, it, it plays a part. You know, I, I don't think it's, you know, I don't ever want to see it doing what I see the beauty behind you that you've created. That's not where it plays, but I want to be able to augment that, especially in the digital world. You go out and create that beautiful thing and then watch what AI can then take it and do with it from there with that and all the creativity and the people it can impact if we use it the right way, you know, and we learn how to use it. So tools and technology, you can't be afraid of it. You have to step into it. You have to learn it. You, you have to be a part of it. I mean, just think, you know, I, you know, I was alive. I remember when there was no internet and then all of a sudden there was an internet and <laughs> yes. everybody was afraid of it. And then there was the dot com, and then there wasn't. And, and now it's streamlined and mellowed out. So that will be the same thing with artificial intelligence. You know, there's, there is always bad actors out there, but let's make more good actors out there and using it in the right way and as a tool. So I'm a true believer, be, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, on the topic of like AI and just um, really more so future, right? Um, with all the things that you have your hand in currently or in the past, um, is there anything that, as you look forward to the future that you're like, you know what, here's something that I would really love to do or have my hand in that I haven't quite done yet? Um, well, um, you know, I am looking more into elevating. That's what the creative preneur is about. Um, I really want to be able to reach more. I want the arts to spread across America and more creative academies like I've created to be able to be creative. And so anyone can have a creative academy, whether that's me helping you in the process and the procedure to get it started and going, or you want a done for you program and you want the curriculum that I've written and you want to just, you know, plug and play that can happen as well. I, I think we can help more people. We can be more inclusive. That's really what I want to see is a more inclusive and diverse um, workforce out there. Um, because I can tell you adults with developmental disability, they're your most loyal that you're ever going to find. And, you know, you give them, you know, you give them an inch and they're going to fill a mile. It, it's, it's just, it, it, it's, it's taking that metaphor that we used to always say was bad. It's they're doing good with it. You know, you have to just learn how to make an accommodation here or there. And usually it's in a little bit of socialization that they don't quite get or tune out of, or it, it's that, you know, at the end of maybe 30 to 35 hours that they've hit their max, you know, kind of thing. And other than that, they're some of the best people I've ever met in the world. The most loyal, talented, creative, heartwarming, 
you know, I, and I love the collaboration of the mainstream and, um, and the special needs population, because that's how we're going to help fill the world with creativity, positivity is um, arts. It really does level the playing field, all different mediums of the arts. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, as we kind of come to the top of our time, I'm wondering, is there anything more that you'd like to tell uh, tell us about, you know, your upcoming book, The Creatorpreneur? Um, like, who is this really for? And where can people, you know, find this? When is it out? Give us some details. Okay. Well, The Creatorpreneur, um, we're looking to go into pre-launch into, in February of next year, where the book will be coming out probably the end of April, uh, beginning of May. Uh, it's going to tie right into our big event, which is DigiFest Temecula. It's also our 10-year anniversary for our nonprofit, JDS Creative Academy. So look forward to having all of you get involved in all of those aspects. Uh, uh, the Creativepreneur is really for anybody who um, is a creative in many different ways. If you're an entrepreneur and you need creativity in your business and some real steps, a framework to how you can leverage and you can scale and you can market your business, this book is going to give you. Or if you're an actor, a writer, a designer, a artist in any type of way, this is going to help you become that creative preneur an actorpreneur, a painterpreneur, a writerpreneur, because you have to be an entrepreneur if you're going to work in this industry and be successful. Because even if you are working for the Disneys and the Warner Brothers of the world, you're still going from production to production. You're having to learn how to market, leverage, and scale so you can continue to grow and find your next job. And, you know, we all, you know, as we all know, we just came out of the writer strike and the actor strike and all of those things. So if you are not able to pick yourself up and step back into that unknown, you know, and go there. And it's very hard for creatives. We're very sensitive individuals, you know? So um, we have to, you know, we have a lot of fear, even though it, we seem fearless sometimes because we just do it. And that is, I think the power of creativity behind us is we have that drive that we just have to like share our creativity with the world, but you have to put it out there. I see it. Actors come in and they're like, I have to get in front of an audience. Uh, yeah, you, you have to put it out there and leave it. It's subjective. Art is subjective. So everyone's going to have an opinion. Let them have their opinion. As long as they're talking about it, it's good, you yeah. know, so just keep going, keep creating more, keep doing. And that's what the creative preneur is about. Um, you'll see, I have an acronym in there. It's called the dream. And with dream, you need direction. You need to realize that dream. So you can evaluate that dream. You can take action on that dream and create that momentum, ride those tiny wins and get the big win. And that's where the creative preneur is going to help you market leverage and scale. Awesome. Awesome. I look forward to uh, getting my hands on a copy of that when it comes available and I encourage everyone listening right now to be sure to put that on your radar uh, because that seems like it's going to be an invaluable resource um, and just tool for helping people. And like you said, it's no longer um, just you're not able to just be the quote creative person. You really need to be an entrepreneur as well and take charge of your own journey and have your hand in all these different facets of it. Um, regardless of whatever your creativity looks like, if you're going to, you know, sustain it as a career, then you really need to grow and learn and get some uh, skills and some frameworks like you're providing um, and, and put that into action and into place. So thank you for, for doing that. Um, and thanks for this conversation today. It's been very inspirational. And I, again, I applaud you for just all the things that you've been doing, you have done uh, for stepping into, for being open, leading the way and um, just encouraging us all to be sure that we're following our dreams, our passions, and making a difference as we're doing that uh, for ourselves and for the people around us. So um, as we kind of close out the episode today, where can people find you? How can they kind of follow along? Lay some links on us. 
Oh, thank you, Mike. Oh, this has been such a pleasure to be a part of your show. Uh, thank you. I've enjoyed our time together. Um, a best way to find me is um, at Diane Strand, also hashtag JDS family. That's where you'll find JDS video and media production, JDS actor studio, the nonprofit creative Academy. Be sure to look up DigiFest Temecula, everyone out there. I'm sure you've got such an amazing creative audience out there that um, in one facet or form, if you um, are looking for laurels, you want to come to DigiFest. It's a competition. All mediums in the digital media industry, can, if it starts even in the uh, paint and uh, fine illustration and you save it to a computer, it works. So that is what DigiFest is all about. It's about how you can level up your career and we're so much more than a film festival. And watch us on Spirit of Innovation, Arts Across America. And, you know, we're all over the place. You can't miss us. Awesome. I'll be sure to put some of those links in the show notes so people can follow along easily. And uh, again, thank you so much for today, Diana. Really, really appreciate our time together. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for listening today. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe, leave a rating and a review. It really helps this podcast be seen and heard by others.